I'm a mathematics undergraduate from India. Welcome to the first video of Number Maniac. This video is based on a paradox which will sort of blow your mind. It's called the painter's paradox. It's very simple to understand. All you need to know for it is very basic calculus. Before we understand what the paradox is, we need to understand a very interesting 3D object. And before I tell you what that object is, let us go to Kolkata where a friend of mine, Kunal, is up to something interesting. Hey guys, I'm Kunal Bhosu, a mathematics student from IIT Khadakpur. Welcome to our channel Number Media. So, as you can see, I'm present here at a college in Kolkata. I'm going to play a guessing game with the students here. So, come with me. I have a 3D figure in my mind and it has infinite surfaces. So, what do you think about its volume? What can you say about it? Well, common sense says that it should be infinite. Like if you imagine any 3D figure, mm -hmm. uh, like a sphere or a cylinder, mm -hmm. then the volume uh, it should be infinite if the surface area is infinite. I have a 3D figure in my mind. One hint I can give you is that it has infinite surface. So what do you think about its volume? It's so obvious, it's, it's infinite. <laughs> What do you think? If I tell someone that a particular object has infinite surface area, then he or she has a tendency to think that it will also have infinite volume. That's what happened with Kunal. Interestingly, he had in his mind an object called a Gabriel's horn, which has an infinite surface area, but a finite volume. If you're wondering how is that possible, we're going to prove it in the remaining part of the video and then proceed to understand what the paradox linked with the object is. We are going to do a few derivations after visualizing what the Gabriel's horn looks like. If you are not very comfortable with basic calculus and wish to jump directly to the paradox, you can skip the derivations. So coming to what the Gabriel's horn looks like. We first consider the graph of xy equal to 1 which looks something like this. And then we only consider the part of the graph with the value of x greater than 1. So this line right here is x equal to 1. Now we don't need the remaining part of the graph so we could just make it disappear. What remains of the graph has to be rotated about the x-axis and what we get after that looks something like a horn, like a trumpet. This is how it looks in 3D and this is what our Gabriel's horn is. Let us now concern ourselves with the volume. So we're going to prove that the volume is finite as I had mentioned earlier in the video. So going for the volume, it will be equal to integration over 1 to infinity because we are only considering the part of the graph greater than 1 and we integrate the elemental volumes dv. This line is again x equal to 1. Now for the elemental volumes we need to consider the cross-sectional area which will be a circle and we consider the elemental length dx. Now this cross-sectional area which we considered it will have a radius, it will be a circle of radius y which is equal to 1 by x in this case because it's the graph of xy equal to 1. So our elemental volume dv can be written as the product of the cross-sectional area and the elemental length so pi r square, r here is nothing but y, the radius, into dx. So that gives us the value of dv. So our elemental volume dv becomes equal to pi multiplied by y square which is 1 by x the whole square multiplied by dx. Now we need to integrate this elemental volume from 1 to infinity. So that's what we're going to do here. The volume is equal to integration from 1 to infinity of dv which is pi multiplied by 1 by x square dx. Now this gives us 
minus 1 by x into pi and we integrate it from 1 to infinity. So what we get here is the value of the volume as pi which is a finite value. Let us now see how we got the surface area of the Gabriel's horn to be infinite. So we are going to prove that the surface area of the Gabriel's horn is infinite and the surface area will be equal to integration from 1 to infinity of the okay. elemental surface areas. This line right here is x equal to 1 and of course the radius of this circle is y which is equal to 1 by x. So our elemental surface areas become equal to 2 pi into 1 over x dl where dl is the elemental length along the curve y equal to 1 by x. So drawing a magnified view over here the elemental length along x will be equal to dx and that along y will be dy for an elemental length dl along the curve. So using Pythagoras theorem we can write the value of dl as under root of dx square plus dy square. Now taking dx out from the square root term we get dl equal to under root of 1 plus dy by dx the whole square into dx. So we could now substitute the value of dl in our surface area integral. So the surface area is equal to integration from 1 to infinity 2 pi into 1 over x dl and dl we found out to be under root of 1 plus dy by dx square into dx. And we observe that the value of this integral will be greater than or equal to the integration from 1 to infinity 2 pi into 1 by x uh, into dx because the square root term will always be greater than or equal to 1. So we get the value of the surface area to be greater than or equal to 2 pi into ln x from 1 to infinity. which of course is infinite. So we get our surface area to be infinite. Now coming to the paradox. Consider you have two Gabriel's horns and you want to paint the entire interior surface of both the horns. You choose to do that in two different ways. For the first horn, you bring pi cubic units of paint and pour it into the horn. The horn is going to get filled completely till the brim because the amount of paint we poured in is same as the volume of the Gabriel's horn. After this, we simply empty the horn of the paint. When you turn a bucket filled with paint upside down, the interior of the bucket, of course, stays coated with the paint. It's the same here. The paint was touching the entire interior surface of the horn. So when you empty the horn, the surface will stay coated with the paint. For the second horn, you want to avoid such a tedious method. So you start painting the inner surface directly. But hey, that surface has an infinite area. You will need an infinite amount of paint. But in the first method, we managed to paint the same infinite area with finite amount of paint. How did we do that? That's exactly what the paradox is. The surprising thing is that the painter's paradox has been resolved, which means that it is no longer a paradox. We'll be providing an explanation in one of the subsequent videos. Till then, you can scratch your brains and try wondering how the actual paint that we think about differs from the mathematical paint.